you for tuning into my YouTube channel today. Today I would like to share three basic strategies that every tech follows regarding motorcycle maintenance. If you follow these three basic strategies, you will build confidence and capability in wrenching on your own motorcycle. Here is a list of some of the most common motorcycle maintenance items. I'm confident that with a little DIY attitude and the ability to follow the three strategies that I'm going to provide today, you will be able to tackle some, at least one, or maybe all of these items on your own motorcycle. Everybody has their own reason for wanting to DIY a project. You know, sometimes it's associated with pride of work, sometimes it's associated with knowing exactly who worked on it and what has been done in the machine. And some people just have the time and would like to save a few bucks and get to know their machine a little better. Whatever reason you have, I'm sure it's a good one. Here are three basic strategies that will point you in the right direction. Number one, a basic set of hand tools, a dedicated workspace, and some limited organization skills. Number two, the ability to acquire and reference the factory service manual for the unit in question. And number three, an understanding of how to utilize parts diagrams and properly source parts in order to complete the repair. Typically try to avoid reinventing the wheel. So I'm gonna to cheat today and show you an awesome video that's brief, professionally made, and very well done by a reputable person in the industry who will show you exactly how to build a budget-friendly motorcycle maintenance toolbox quickly, seamlessly, and under $500. But back to the first bullet, let's go with workspace and organization skills. Here you can see I have a simple carburetor job out of a Honda Trail 70 and it is on a clean work surface, the parts are organized, uh, I have a dedicated location to place parts once I pull them from the carburetor and along the top of the screen you'll notice that I have old parts and new parts aligned with each other. This helps me stay organized and it helps me compare the new parts to the old parts to see the deficiencies in the old parts and also compare sizing from old to new. Uh, any discrepancies at this point will be obvious to me and I can deal with them before I spend all the time putting the component back together onto the motorcycle only to find out that there is an issue. Here's a similar example to the last one. Uh, as you can see, this is a twin set of carburetors, and once again, I am organized, I have a dedicated workspace, and all of my new parts are directly in front of me, so I'm prepared to perform the work. On a final note regarding workspace and organization, it doesn't really matter how many pieces you're removing from the motorcycle, whether it's three pieces to drain the engine oil or 200 pieces to rebuild an engine. If you have a dedicated workspace, you stay clean and organized, and you plan ahead, you will always remain in control of the project. One final tip, as you disassemble items, if you keep them in order, moving left to right or right to left, you'll have a timestamp of when certain components were removed from the motorcycle uh, from earlier to later. Bullet number two, acquiring and referencing the factory service manual. In order to have confidence in working with your machine, you can't be guessing at specifications and clearances. The fact is, having the factory service manual for your machine or whatever unit you may be working on will give you the answers to the test and give you the confidence you need to disassemble and assemble system components properly and accurately. Sometimes acquiring a factory service manual can be more challenging than other times. Starting with a simple search engine and typing in the year, make, and model of the unit you're working on will start helping you to get into the right direction. The fact of the matter is, sometimes they're going to be free, sometimes they're going to be a couple bucks, and sometimes you're just going to prefer to buy a hard copy or a paperback copy and physically own the factory service manual. If you actually own this unit, it is your personal bike, I would highly advise and recommend that you have access to a paperback or a hard copy of the manual. So on a side note, Haynes and Climber make perfectly adequate, if not even better, substitutions for factory service manuals. So at this point, I'm sure you're excited to know that you have the keys to the kingdom. You have the textbook that shows you how to remove all the components and put the entire bike back together. A good place to start with a service manual is the periodic maintenance section. 
Sometimes it's a full a chapter, sometimes it's just a chart, but either way, it'll let you familiarize yourself with what service and maintenance items should be performed at what intervals. An easier way to save time and navigate through a 2, 3, 4, even 500 page service manual is to use a search function via Control F. You know, for example, if you want to work on your front forks, type in front fork, engine oil, front brake, rear brake, valve clearances. All of these keywords are pretty uniform and consistent throughout a factory service manual and will save you a lot of time in jumping around through the document. I can see the biggest problem already. What if you're like me and you're a visual learner and you can't just sit down and read a 500 page book? Well, you're in luck. Through the utilization of parts diagrams, you'll be able to have a visual reference the entire time you're pursuing your repair strategy. I have opened up a browser with a few common places of sorts parts diagrams. I like this website, Country Cat, for Arctic Cat, and some Kawasaki units. Partzilla is typically my go-to. Uh, they typically have every parts diagram I'm looking for, whether the unit's 50 years old or 5 months old. Bike Bandit is also a popular choice among riders. Let's say you have a 2015 Yamaha R3 and you would like to look at the diagram for rebuilding the front forks. So before you even came to this place and ordered any parts, because we're going to be smart about this and save our money, we're going to open up the factory service manual and then we're going to reference the parts diagram to plan ahead and not get caught off guard. So we're going to go to Yamaha through Partzilla, we're going to open up 2015 and we're going to scroll down to YZFR3. And we're gonna, this is alphabetized. And as you can see, we can see the timeline as to how we, we got here. And at the bottom left, in alphabetical order, we're gonna find F for front fork. We're gonna open this up, and we are gonna see a list of components broken down by number and part number along the right column, and a complete parts diagram microfiche of exactly what components are within the system and where they are placed and their proper orientation within the system. This is good. You've made it this far. You've tackled the project. You've educated yourself on how to perform the work. You've removed the old part and now you realize that you need the new one. Let's look at some ways to source parts. I typically break down sourcing parts into three categories. The first one is factory OEM. These should come directly from the maker of the factory of the unit that you're working on and should be exact replacements for what you are replacing. Number two would be reputable aftermarket. These are companies that make aftermarket parts that are not directly from factory Honda, that are reputable within the power sports industry and have typically been doing this for quite some time. Their products are proven and commonly viewed as upgrades to factory parts. Category three would be what I would call less reputable or not known. Uh, I typically refer to these as roll your own dice or gamble your own odds if you choose to go with a cheap alternative to reputable parts. Regarding factory parts, I like to start in the service manual. Sometimes it will show you exactly what you need uh, to include the spark plug, what viscosity of oil, oil filter, battery, tube or tire size, things of that nature. Another common place you can look is on the motorcycle itself. Certain pieces of data are included there on the swing arm or the frame. Back to factory parts and using Partzilla. The service manual from the factory is always going to recommend that you use genuine parts for replacement. And when they mean genuine parts, they mean the 20 million digit part number associated with the Yamaha factory regarding parts. So in this case, an oil seal is $8 a pop. That's not crazy expensive considering an aftermarket one is of similar cost. I think a factory part is reputable and I also think that reputable aftermarket retailers are just as safe of a bet. You have places like motorsport.com for dirt bike parts. I like to use Revzilla and Sport Bike Track Gear to browse what other aftermarket parts are available from reputable aftermarket dealers. On a final note, I like to reference websites like All Balls Racing to check and see what aftermarket parts they have readily available. Let's use a 2007 Yamaha WR250F. 
one of my personal bikes that I own and love to ride. As you can see, there are several options of reputable aftermarket rebuild kits that you can use to include basically every part on the carburetor, if you would choose to rebuild that. Uh, cables and controls, brakes, not really to include pads, but uh, more associated with the caliper or the master cylinder and suspension work. Uh, seals, bearings, and bushings, things of that nature. It's very convenient to see the part numbers and prices all displayed in one place. It helps you save a lot of time in order from one vendor. Let's use the same bike, the 2007 Yamaha WR250F, and let's go to the high flow catalog. I like using high flow filters. I've never had an issue with their air or oil filters. They're typically affordable and readily available. WR250F 2007, which is aluminum frame and carbureted. As you can see, they have the universal oil filter number displayed right here. This unit takes a number 141 oil filter. This is typically the same among K&N, High Flow, and other reputable brands. Let's look at the JT Sprockets catalog. I like to reference this website to, to check chain and stock gearing configurations on units. Again, we'll use a 2007 WR250F. And as you can see here, I have a couple of options for front and rear sprocket. Uh, Self-cleaning, looks like we have aluminum or steel rear option. But I can change up the gearing among teeth sizes that are available. I get the direct part number for the unit. And also, the pitch and the stock length of the standard drive chain. This is all very helpful information. And the fact that I accessed all of these pieces of data within 30 seconds just saved me a lot of time. My last example will be associated around suspension work. I believe Racetech makes good products and I've used them on multiple units without a single issue. I think they are a significant performance upgrade, very reputable and affordable. So here we have the Racetech website. Let's use again the same bike. We'll go to product search, we'll pick out Yamaha 2007. WR250F. So not only does this chart give you um, the products that they sell for your bike, uh, typically these are down here toward the bottom, type 3 gold valve, compression kit, things of that nature, but it also gives you some instructions on how to rebuild forks supplemental to the manual. It gives you the fork weight, it gives you the oil level or the air gap within the fork, recommended stock preload, nitrogen pressure for the shock. Again, all valuable pieces of information for performing this type of work. This is another example of a website that I typically reference in order to perform service work. So there you have it. You have the keys to the kingdom and your foot through the door. I encourage you to do your own maintenance on your motorcycle. It's probably not as difficult as you may think as long as you follow these service strategies. Good luck with everything. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions and I hope you enjoyed the video content.